Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about specifically why I dropped out of Western Governors University's software engineering program. Um, I did a video talking a little bit about considering dropping out of college and I, I talked a little bit about this. This is going to go and dive in a little bit deeper into my thought process, what I didn't like about WGU's program and sort of why it wasn't a right fit for me. Hey guys, I just want to do a quick shout out to my JavaScript course if you're interested in it. It's about seven and a half hours of content. I'm still adding some stuff. I think I'm going to add some new um, ES7, ES8 content to it. You can check it out. It has algorithms in it and uh, we go over a markdown, a little bit of Git to get you going. So uh, go ahead and check it out. There'll be a link in the description below with a coupon code so you can get it for real cheap. Alright, so before we go um, talking about the things that the reasons as to why I dropped out of WGU, I think it's important to provide context for why I went back to college uh, and why I was planning to finish my degree and what what attracted me to WGU. Because the reasons I stopped going may not be the reasons you stopped going. It's it's at least valid for you to know what some of the what some of the pros are, what some of the benefits are, right? So. Um, What's going on with the hair today? All right, so so WGU is great in the fact that you can accomplish a lot in a short amount of time. Um, not only is there a time commitment, but or a, a money commitment, and it, it's relatively low as far as college goes, um, but it's still completely overpriced in my opinion. We'll talk about that later. It's about thirty five hundred dollars for six a six month semester. You can start whenever you want, so you can start this month. You don't have to wait for the next six month period or you know a month away from now. And you can accomplish as many courses, you can complete as many courses as you are able to. So in theory, if you're able to, you can knock out an entire bachelor's degree program in just one semester, which is pretty cool. I found a lot of success in that, and in six weeks I did three courses, and uh, I think it was like 13 units. Uh, and so I was accomplishing a course every two weeks. So this, these are the things that I liked about the program, um, that... A relative in, in comparison to other colleges it was cheap uh, in terms of the amount of work I could get done uh, you know it sped up the timetable so I don't have to spend four years I could do it in a year um, those were the things that I liked about WGU now why did I go back to school I went back to school because I'm a big believer in filling in the gaps and what I mean by that is um, if you don't understand certain software principles as a junior developer, you should understand them by a senior developer. And I kind of felt that way. Um, I kind of felt that way uh, with college as well. Is that that was that was the point in my resume where it was the weakest. Everything else I felt like was strong and it, you know strong, <laughs> but um, was a strength rather. Uh, but that was that was the one area where okay. This is a blank or a gap I could fill in. And so that's kind of where I went back. Now, why did I stop going to WGU specifically? Well, um, I did those three courses and I started two others as well. And um, I, had a, I had a very poor time with tech support for one. Uh, I had an issue with the course where I studied, studied, studied through this whole course. But then I spent two weeks studying through a course and the course was bugged. So I couldn't really study for the final. All the all the final resources that were there that I've been using all this time for this specific course was bugged, and there's no indication of that. Um, so that was a little bit that that made me a little bit salty because um, that's two weeks of wasted work, right? Um, but in terms of the course content, uh, as I did a web dev one of their web dev courses, I could tell you that the content material itself was outdated by about 10 to 15 years. Uh, we're talking about things in HTML4, for instance. We're talking about, um, you know, um, what is jo uh, Microsoft way back in the day had a competing version of JavaScript. These are the things that we're talking about in this web dev course. We're talking about GUI editors, GUI text editors. Um, thing, they have links in their, on their pages that lead to 404 pages for products that don't exist anymore or, or um, you know, Recommend, recommending text editors that aren't being maintained anymore. Things that are just, from a educational institution, you need to have better standards. And you need to teach more up-to-date content. So um, that was one, one major issue. 
with it. The other thing was oftentimes you would do courses on like LinkedIn learning. And, and I think that was probably the thing that really pushed me over the edge a little bit was seeing a course on like, you would just have like a quality assurance course, for instance, on LinkedIn learning. And there's nothing wrong with LinkedIn learning or Udemy. I happen to be fans of all of those things. But I feel like when you go to college and you're paying $3,500 for six months, you should have more than just a video course um, on your on your platform. And part, part of that reasoning is that if you don't, which I have no issue with, why are you paying you know, $3,500. So, so in theory, you need to do four, I want to say four courses a semester, which comes out to about $800 a course, eight, 850 a course. So I felt at the end of the day that um, when I'm paying $850 for a Udemy course, essentially, that has a test that if I pass, I get some credits, that I was almost being scammed. Uh, so, uh, and that's, that's not to say that WG was scammy or that there, you're not going to have an actual bachelor's degree at the end of it. You will. It's, uh, it's a, 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 a regionally accredited bachelor's degree, like all bachelor's degrees, uh, from, uh, like a state college, for instance. So all that's great and good. And you'll have a degree and that will help you get through that HR firewall. But I've always been of the mindset that I want practi practical things. I don't care about necessarily the piece of paper. I want skills. And so in this case, I went back for the paper and I, I forgot about who I was as a person about wanting things that were relevant. And in the process of being taught outdated material, in the process of of um, being essentially sold Udemy courses for a price point of about $850 a piece. Um, it just felt so unbelievably dirty that no other, no other, if it wasn't a college, no other institution could get away with it, which is, which is unfortunate. You should go to a school in which you feel like you're getting value and you feel like you are learning. And what I felt like when I was doing here is I was basically studying to pass a test. And, and it, was, it was unfortunate. And um, I, I, this, here's the thing, guys. Um, for me, it, it's not gonna work out. My time, my energy, forget the money aspect of it, although that played a part. Um, the money was fine. I didn't have to take out any student loans. I didn't have to, you know, um, work extra hours. I make enough money as a developer that that was just, you know, um, I paid the same amount for that semester as I did for my computer. It's, it's, it, it's a, it's a amount of money that means something, but it's not life changing to me. So, all right, cool. So I wasted $3,500. I got a little bit of that back. I got like 800 of that back. So, um, they do have some return policy. So if you don't like it on a side note, um, it's, I want to say if you drop out before halfway of the semester, you get a portion back. They have some math where you like, you get the sooner you drop out, the more money you get back. So, uh, if you are enrolled and you're not sure what to do, drop out as soon as possible. And you can do that by sending an email to your, um, your contact, your counselor, your advisor, whatever they're calling them now. Um, but, but yeah, so it was, it was one of those situations where I felt like my time, because when you go back to school, when you go to school, what you're trading is two things. You're trading money, uh, but more importantly, you're trading time. So my time is more valuable than, um, what this degree was going to get me. Right. So my time can be used to actually get better in skills that matter. My time can be used to um, become a better developer uh, my time can be used to write a book, to build a course, to work on the YouTube channel, to promote myself and my career in a direction that's going to be more impactful than what this piece of paper was going to give me. Um, now, some people, they, they need that piece of paper because they, they struggle um, very highly with going down their own learning path. And I, I have a whole video talking about 
um, you know, should you drop out of college and warning you about how that freedom can be your downfall if you're, if you're not if you're not that type of individual. Um, I, on the other hand, have no have no problem getting over the HR firewall. Um, I've interviewed at large companies like Amazon and Facebook before I even got hired because I'm not up to their standards quite yet, I guess. Uh, but um, if I felt like I needed that piece of paper to uh, crack doors, open doors, I might have been more inclined to stay in, even though I felt like I was being scammed <laughs> because of the absurd amount of prices for basically a Udemy course and how at the end of the day you're learning outdated material. Um, so that that's my two that's my thoughts about why I dropped out of WGU. Um, so would I still recommend them? Oddly enough, some people need that HR firewall scaler. Um, so if you if you want if you're working full time and you absolutely have to have that degree, here's the thing, guys. Regardless of where you go, regardless of where you go um, in school, you're going to have to learn a ton of stuff out of school. Even if you say your degree covers 10%, which I think is generous, you're going to have to learn 90% on your own. Um, and so uh, you may learn some fundamentals, but you can learn fundamentals from a Udemy course for $15 from, you know, a professor that wrote a course and do all this sort of stuff. So, um, but if you absolutely have to have that degree for the for the two reasons being the reasons I went low low relative cost in comparison to other colleges, and um, the ability to finish credits as soon as possible, I think it's a, a good idea to consider it. Now, will you learn some stuff? You might. I didn't find myself learning <laughs> anything in the five courses I was there, um, except very confused with how outdated everything was but um that's that's my two cents guys i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment like subscribe share support my patreon all that good stuff um and let me know your opinions in the uh chat below i'd love to you know this i'm just one guy who went to wgu that um you know was already working as a software developer and very disappointed with with what it was um but there may be people who if are in similar situations to you, where you are a aspiring software developer. You have no idea where to get started, and it could be beneficial to you. Um, and you know, maybe someone in the chat will tell you their their story, their situation. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, hit that notification bell, so you let so I can you can hear wonderful stories like this. <laughs> All right, so Matt has a good question here. Should you put projects that are cookie cutter from tutorials on your GitHub and LinkedIn? So it kind of depends, right? So if all you have is that, that is better than nothing, right? It is better to have that on your LinkedIn, on your GitHub when you have nothing, because at least you have something to show that you code, right? It's better to see some an ugly LinkedIn, a ugly uh, um, an ugly batch of code than nothing at all because that's what they prove it and as you move forward on your github and linkedin you can always take them off as you build more unique custom projects which is what should be your goal and you can see here i have 27 repositories you can also on github pin repositories that you want people to see so that when they go to the page this is what pops out so you'll see i have three things here my code fight algorithms my crypto top 100 and then certificates that i've earned through udemy or other organizations so um, keep that in mind. It is okay when you're just getting started. I have no issue with that. I think it's good um, because it's better than nothing. That's really how you have to look at it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see when I post new content. And if you're interested in any of my Udemy courses, I currently have some on JavaScript and two on Angular. And I'm constantly adding to them and updating them. It's been a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, there's links in the description below where you can save some money in the process and help me out. See you next time.